By now, much of America knows the name David Dorn. He was a 77-year-old black man, a retired police captain, and he was shot in the head last week in St. Louis trying to protect his friend's pawn shop from looters. Now, the face that you might not know is this one. This is 24-year-old Stephen Cannon, who was arrested yesterday in connection with that shooting. Notice how he's, well, he's not a white cop. Authorities say they've identified Cannon as Dorn's killer after surveillance footage from that pawn shop showed him as the only person standing on the street corner at the time that Dorn was shot. The video also showed him inside the store before the shooting and then leaving the store with a gun in his hand. Shell casings were also reportedly found where he was standing on the corner. Now, Cannon has been charged with first degree murder, robbery, and being a felon in possession of a gun, because as shocking as this might sound, this wasn't his first rodeo. He's now being held without bond. But unfortunately, Dorn is not the only black person to have lost his life in all of this insanity. Dave Patrick Underwood was shot in what appears to have been a drive-by shooting, as he and several other contracted federal officers were monitoring a protest in Oakland, California. 22-year-old Italia Kelly was shot while leaving a protest at a Walmart in Davenport, Iowa. 38-year-old Chris Beatty, a former offensive lineman for Indiana University known as Mr. Indianapolis, he was shot and killed near his apartment as protests erupted across that city. A 21-year-old man was killed in downtown Detroit after someone fired shots into a vehicle during a protest there. More black people have died in the unrest of this past week than were lost in the incident that sparked the whole thing. Now someone please tell me how in the world that makes sense. Because this argument isn't adding up. So you're mad that a black life was lost, so everyone loses their minds and freaks out in the street. Now all five of these people are dead. Five. That's more than half the number of unarmed black men who were shot by police last year. True story. Only nine unarmed black men were shot by police last year compared to 19 white men. Of the roughly 1,000 people killed by police every year, less than 4% involve a white cop and an unarmed black man. If you are buying into this narrative that innocent black Americans are being systemically murdered by the police, you can scream that in the streets all day long, but the stats don't back that up. They just don't. And if you're demanding that we have a conversation about policing in black communities, it can't be a conversation that omits key relevant factors like this one that might be uncomfortable to you. Or like the fact that while black Americans make up only about 13% of the U.S. population, blacks commit more than 50% of homicides at a rate nearly seven times higher than whites. They also make up nearly half of all homicide victims. A black person is over six times more likely to be the victim of a homicide than a white person. 93% of black homicide victims were killed by a black offender. Between 2011 and 2013, 38.5% of people arrested for murder, manslaughter, rape, robbery, and aggravated assault were black. Their victims, also majority black. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that much of this stems from the crippling poverty, fatherlessness, substance abuse, and failed education system that pervades many black communities in our urban areas. Areas largely controlled by Democrats. And problems that painting Black Lives Matter on the street sure as heck isn't going to fix. Taking down a Confederate monument is not going to put black dads back in the home. Renaming a street isn't going to increase graduation rates in inner city schools. Taking a knee doesn't get a young black woman a job. And all the anti-cop protests in the world are not going to stop gang violence. Liberal policies create the cesspool of social problems that become breeding grounds for crime and lead to an increase in policing. This is not difficult, people. If you really want to have this conversation, let's have it, but let's have it honestly. If you're really serious about affecting change and making life better for black Americans, you have got to be willing to discuss more than just police brutality. You've got to be able to think deeper than just scrawling defund the police on a cardboard sign. And if you're going to say that black lives matter, then they all have to matter. Child victims of gang violence have to matter. Chicago shooting victims have to matter. David Dorn and Natalia Kelly and Dave Underwood have to matter just as much as George Floyd did. They can't only matter when they're killed by a white cop. And that's your Reality Check America. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page, that you like us on Facebook and Twitter, and stay sane out there.